Okay, today I'm going to talk you through my workflow for how I study a subject using Obsidian or really any networked note-taking tool like Rome or RemNote and so on. Before I dive in, my workflow is largely based off a recent blog post that I wrote and I'll link it in the description. And the author of this blog post proposes two phases of your note-taking. So you have the first phase of context-based note-taking and the second, which is long-term knowledge management. Now, I'll go through my notes and I'll talk you through those concepts as I go. So let's dive in. So the first thing you'll recognize is my course I'm studying is Introduction to Machine Learning. Just think to yourself, now we are currently in that first phase, context-based note-taking. And this, all this really means is how you've, how 99% of us take notes when we were growing up and still do now, right? You sit in your classroom, your lecture, or watching a video or reading a blog post to study, and you take notes on what you're learning and what you deem important for your knowledge. And Alongside that, you typically have the traditional folder structure of having, you know, a folder for your course and separate notes for like maybe the week or the class number that you are taking. So if you take a look at mine, I've created a large folder for the course and then subfolders for each week of the course. Then within that week, there's maybe one to three you could call them lectures, you know, or classes. In week one, there's an overview of machine learning. And then week two, it dives into like regression models, how they're structured and how they work. This is the one I'm going to use as an example. You'll see there's more notes on the right, the, the left hand side. So as I was watching the videos in this week on regression models, I was just taking notes as you would, you know, so uh, regression models is a type of supervised learning. They talked about training data, so I wrote down the definition, mathematical form for linear regression. Then they talk about how there's cost functions and what that really means with pictures that I screenshot it from the video. Another topic on gradients descent. And you can see this is like how anyone in history takes notes. And I've leveraged the benefits of Markdown. So I'm, you know, making subheadings that roughly make sense to me at the time. So in the context of watching the video, what do I think is salient? Um, and I'm just writing my knowledge. Okay. So this, this is probably about an hour and a half or worth of content or notes. That is broadly your, your phase one, right? You've sat in a class, you've taken your notes. That's it. The second phase is the most important for leveraging the power of connected note taking. So what do, what do we mean by long term knowledge management? Well, the principles of like Zettelkasten and connected note taking is the idea that you can have many, many different notes and they all connect to each other via links, a bit like Wikipedia. So what you'll pick up on here is I've already kind of made the start is Basically, you should be approaching this second phase. Maybe it's like straight after your class or at the end of the week. You sit down and review your notes from your classes. I'm now sat down uh, and I'm thinking, OK, how can I manage my long term knowledge? So I'll read through the notes and it's kind of that almost serves as a um, space repetition, right? You're, you're rereading them, but you're you need to keep in mind a few things like what are the key concepts that are like important to you as a learner and also the, the subject matter that you're working with. So I go through and I see, okay, training data. I've actually written the definition here. I think that's an important concept in machine learning in general. So what I've done, if you, you'll see it's a backlink, right? It's got the two square brackets. So it means if I open that up, it creates, it actually already existed because I made it, 
a separate note called training data. And it may seem duplicative, and it is, but long term, this is long term management. I've put the definition into that note, <clears throat> and then I've backlinked references. So I'm saying, okay, I, I actually, it's referenced in uh, regression models, this, this note here. Okay, it may seem silly there, but over time, there'll be other lectures, other things I read that reference training data in a new way. Maybe my understanding of the definition changes and I can update it in the atomic note for training data or add to it. <clears throat> and then I can open up and eventually see wherever it's mentioned. So if I want to look in the context of that class or that article in which I read about training data, I can do that. Right, so I think let's walk through it a bit more and hopefully it'll become clearer the benefits of this. So I'll scroll down and I see, okay, cost function. I, I subheaded it, it's clearly important. And so <clears throat> there's a lot of information. So I made a note on that. And I had to sit and think because this wasn't a formal definition. Um, I had to really think, okay, what does it mean in my understanding? So in a way you're challenging your knowledge and understanding whilst curating your long-term notes. So I came up with a definition here <clears throat> and then referenced it back. But I also, as I scroll down, I see, okay, it actually, in the class, they gave an example of a cost function that's quite common, mean squared error. So within cost function note, I said, okay, common cost functions. For now, I've only learned about one and I've basically just done a list and linked it. So then I've made an atomic note for that. And let me bring that down here. And this one is quite nice because I kind of had to come up in my head with what does that mean in, in words? Because I had the mathematical definition and it kind of made sense, but I forced myself to write in definition terms, what does that mean? And then I can link it back. Okay, so hopefully you're starting to get the gist. And what I can now show you is kind of a live workflow because I haven't gone through all of this yet. So gradient descent is another topic um, that I think is really important. And so I've pre-linked that, but I haven't, I haven't curated it. So consider this a live demo of long-term knowledge management. So, right, so actually I've written a really good definition here. <clears throat> it's an algorithm to minimize some function, finding the direction of steepest thing. Okay, cool. Okay, what I also see here is there is types of gradient descent and he alluded to, to the fact that there are other types, but didn't cover it. So, I've kind of left in this uh, second item. And in future, hopefully, as I learn about gradient descent in more detail in future lectures, I can come back and f update this. Okay, procedure, that's pretty useful, like for how the algorithm works. Uh, yeah, multiple minima. So that's like a challenge of the model. Mathematical form. I think it's quite important to go towards the top as this procedure, I think. And so what I'm going to do is just like in the other ones, I'm going to backlink to this note-taking. Note -taking. So I know where a lot of my knowledge has come from and I can even link to specific sections within that note. So what I've done here is link to this note, but specifically this section. So where he started talking about gradient descent. Now, I realize that looks like a lot of um, copy and pasting, but I think that's an example where my notes are really well refined and I kind of understand it well. So, okay, here's where I hopefully you see some of the benefit, right? Because I've just taken, I've curated notes related to that 
first class on regression models. And then we get to week two. And they're talking about now multiple linear regression. It's a different technique in machine learning. <clears throat> and what you'll see is, okay, the topic of gradient descent came up again, right? But it's just for a different application. But maybe I learn something new to update my long-term knowledge, right? So I've got knowledge about here, about gradient descent. Then it covers um, the normal equation. Normal equation can be used as an alternative to gradient descent algorithm. Okay, so I've learned something new there. I think I should update my gradient descent knowledge to say alternative uh, algorithms. Boom, and I can put in the normal equation. And what I've learned is you know, you could put all the information in all equation, but sometimes you could put a short note and say, alternative, but not when number of features is large, brackets greater than 10,000. So I've just summarized this really succinctly. Okay, and then my class, I also learned something else new about gradient descent. Um, that, you know, how do you know to check for convergence that, um, it's obtaining like the optimum values for you. And so, boom, I need to update my knowledge on gradient descent again and say, checking for convergence. The best way is to look at the learning curve. I think all of this is really clear. So I'm going to literally copy and paste it for now. Right. Okay, so they talk about other stuff like feature engineering, polynomial regression, cool. So what you've seen there is a really good example of, before I took the class, I knew nothing about gradient descent. I took my first class on regression models. I learned loads and loads of things, loads of concepts, uh, training data, cost function, a type of cost function, gradient descent, and so on. And so I learned that in a class, and then I come back to it at a later point, and I say, okay, what's the key concepts? And gradient descent happened to be one of them. So I made a longer term note that has all the information from this one class. And then what happened was I took a class in second week on multiple linear regression. In theory, nothing to do with gradient descent, but as it happens, like all things in the world, things are interconnected, gradient descent also applies to multiple linear regression. And the tutor chose to add more information about gradient descent. He talked about the normal equation as an alternative, and he talked about checking for convergence of gradient descent algorithm. So that was new knowledge that I hadn't previously had. And so I took that knowledge and put it into my important long-term concept of gradient descent. So it is all in one place. And as I just forgot, multiple linear regression is where I took that note from. And so hopefully you can see the benefit there that if I hadn't done this long-term curation, of important things to know, I would forever potentially have separate bits of knowledge about gradient descent because one bit is in class one, another bit is in class two, and they're only learned in the context of gradient descent for a linear regression, univariate, and then this, the, the bit about checking for convergence I learned in class two. So I always associate it with multiple linear regression because that's what class two is about. But actually that knowledge is all under the topic gradient descent. And if you think about it, this can apply to any subject. Like I realize some of the people watching may have switched off because this is data science, they don't understand it, whatever. But you could use this in biology, history, um, literally any topic, hopefully you can see the benefit that you're 
building up your long-term knowledge and updating those important concepts with backlinks to where you actually originally learned them. So you can remember the context or the video that you were watching when you learned that thing. And so it just continually updates over time. And so another nice thing is now that you've kind of come back to look at your class notes, you can open the local graph and it's a nice way of like thinking about how does like firstly the class regression models like the class that i took <clears throat> what were the key concepts that i learned and took away from it here you go cost function linear regression training data gradient descent so it really nicely sums up what you learned um, but then if we jump over to uh, gradient descent you can kind of see the concepts that are relevant to it so a uh, learning curve, multiple linear regression, the normal equation, batch gradient descent. And I think over time, as I build this out, I'll get nicer looking networked diagrams with a really, really clearer picture of how everything links together. And hopefully that clears things up in my head. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you got any value out of it, give it a like and consider subscribing. And honestly, please, if you have advice or other ways of working, feel free to comment below or reach out to me on Twitter or on my blog website. Um, I'd love to hear from you and just how other people are approaching this way of working.